Well, hello there. I'm Linda V. Taylor, and this is Best of Both Worlds. Today I'm working on a quilt which when I opened it I thought it was a crazy quilt but my friend Robin said please don't lose the trees I want an overall pattern but don't lose the trees so I don't know if you can see the trees or not but I did my best to bring them back and so that's what we're going to be working on today we're also going to be doing just a new idea that I had as I was doing the quilt and that is putting the name of the quilt, the name of the person of the maker on the wall hanging sleeve. So let's get started. Here is this cute quilt. I call it tra crazy trees because actually I thought it was a crazy quilt when, um, when I saw it at first, but she wanted to make sure that the trees, and you can see there's a tree and here's a tree. She wants to make sure that her trees do not get lost on here. So, um, and you can see I used a really cute tree pattern, one of my, one of my overall patterns. And um, I have one more row to do and I wanted to show you how I cut that out using the trim feature, how I cut out the tree so that it just comes up to them and then skips over. Then later we'll go back and fill these in with some freehand techniques. Very, very fun. So I'll show you on the computer how I'm cutting those out. The last row is in place, of course, because I've been doing the overall. And so all I have to do is cut out the trees. So here's the, here are the rows that I have already done. And um, here's the row that I have left. I've already trimmed out a few of these. Um, and so all I have to do is go up to draw trim and then I will go over to the machine and just click around those trees. So I just start here at the bottom like this and come around just clicking on these points of the tree. And then close, then just go over to the next one. It goes really fast. And then we will look up there and see what happened on the screen. So there are my five trees that are on that row. And you can see some of them were already, um, that was already taken out on the last row. But that's okay. Um, the other thing I have now is I just need to cut off the bottom where, where the bottom of my quilt is. So I'm going to go along the edge of that and I'm again going to, going to do the draw trim. Back at the computer now I can finish drawing this out and I'm just going to make sure that that doesn't even come close to stitching those and go up here and close. Now that will just stop right at the edge of the quilt and I have to exit the drawing. And now I can just go up and tell the machine to please start stitching. This is a really nice pattern and she saw the pattern that was going on and she absolutely loved it. Um, this one is 2246 in Linda Taylor Patterns. It also comes with some little deer in it, but we didn't put the deer in this one. What this does is give that background kind of a foresty look. So I was thinking the whole time I've been doing this quilt, uh, because she said, don't lose my trees, that um, I thought the name of it should be, can you see the trees for the forest? 
So we're going to do some plays on that. I'll show you what we're going to do um, to make that title just come alive. You can see that it's going around um, the edges. Takes some out and then it comes back, does its little um, security stitches and then takes off. Some of these little places are just uh, just enough on the other side to have a little bit. But when you get finished, I mean, you can see a tree is behind there and then their stem is in the front. So it's awesome. What a neat feature. Now, of course, if you were doing freehand, then um, you wouldn't have any problem there because you just do your freehand all around the trees and don't go on the trees. I found that it's hard for me sometimes to see those trees. So you might want to um, just make a paper tree and lay it on the trees as you go around if you're doing freehand, if you're doing a pattern like this or this pattern. So we'll just let this stitch out and then I'm going to show you the next thing I'm going to do. When you're finished, you, you have to go back and cut all the little jump overs on top of the trees, but that really isn't a problem for me. If you wanted to trim those out, you know, on the computer beforehand, you could do that. But I just go around each tree and um, they're easy to find. So actually I've been sitting here while it goes across and just cutting them off each tree as I do it since I'm just watching it as it goes anyway. Okay, the machine sewed exactly what you see up here and left the trees blank and cut the bottom off where I needed it to be. So now I'm going to do something um, else on this quilt. I want to write the title of the quilt at the bottom of the quilt. So I'm going to go into my draw boundary. Now I'm over to the quilt and along in the bottom with a contrasting thread. So I'm going to go, I'm not going to go clear out to the edge. I'm going to start right there, um, even with the edge of the piecing. And as I come across, I can make some other um, little marks here from that point. And then I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay a foot width away from the bottom because of the course that would be where she would be binding it. And we can close that off. Now we'll go back to the computer. We'll exit the drawing. And you can see right there where I have um, my border. And I'm going to go into text, draw text. And I will um, click, it says click object or point on quilt group. So I'm going to click it there. And then I'm going to put can you see the trees for the forest? Question mark. Okay, and that looks good to me. I'm going to put okay. So if I move this down a little bit, I'm going to um, highlight all of it so it'll all be together. And I can increase it. Okay, so then I can increase it to be exactly what I what I want it to be. Now I have to watch these um, these letters, the letter F, because it comes down below there, and I am going to stretch this out. I don't want to stretch it too much, so I think I'll just come in. I know that the bottom is quilted, so I don't have to worry about it. I could e even count the squares. I know these are inch squares, so that's coming in seven. One, two, three, four, so like that, and then we can center it. Okay, so now we'll let that stitch out right on top of our quilting and everything that we have. We'll combine those patterns so it'll all stitch out into one. Then we will start quilting. I have a tan thread in here now, so let's see how we do.
The nice thing about the Statler is that you can tell this to stitch it again and it stitches right over in the same place. I have also done a lot of freehand writing on quilts, so don't feel like if you don't have a computerized machine that you can't write this out. You could do block letters, you can do um, cursive like we have here, and you know you can always pencil it on with your chalk pencil and then just stitch over it if you're a little worried about your penmanship, or making sure that you're getting the words on exactly where you want them to be. Probably I'm going to have this go over one more time, just so it's a little bit um, more obvious. I think it's just awesome. I also believe that the more personal things you can do on the quilts, um, just makes them so endearing to you, to your family, to your friends, or to your customers. shows that you really care about the quilt and um, the whole concept of quilting. Now the question mark and then I will go over that one more time and you will definitely be able to see it better. Then I'm going to show you something really fun that I did. Okay, so now all I have to do is highlight that, right click and tell it um, to show that it's unsewn and then I can start quilting again. There we go. I'm just cutting the, the thread that's dragged in between, easy like I will for the trees. It's doing it like less than an eighth of an inch from the original. It is so awesome looking. I love it. I think that's because it has that little bit of batting in it, of course, and so it is so close. Looks like it was made to do that. Perfect. This is so exciting. I have never done this before and the idea just came to me as I was doing this quilt because she asked me if I knew how to do a wall hanging sleeve because this is definitely going to be a quilt that's going to hang in her sister's cabin and so it's going to need a sleeve on it. She's never done a sleeve. And I just happened, the, ba the back of this quilt is a gold print cotton and of course it's right side down. So I noticed there was about 10 inches of fabric here and you need eight and a half inches for a sleeve. You cut it eight and a half inches and then um, you fold it up and, and I'll explain that a little bit better. But then I thought, you know what, I could put the name of the quilt and put her name, her name is Robin Bailey, and the year on it. Uh, all I had to do was reverse all the writing and I'll show you how I do that on the computer. This would be harder to do freehand. You'd almost have to have it turned the other way. Now I didn't use a batting because that would be pretty heavy in a wall hanging sleeve. But I did want to put another piece of fabric there. I didn't want to just do it with one layer because the two layers makes it a little bit more substantial to do the quilting on. You don't need two layers if you're just doing the sleeve. It has to be the same length as her quilt um, and then she'll, she'll do her two hems in there so it'll end up about an inch shorter on each side which is perfect for your wall hanging sleeves. You never want to see that hanging out of the quilt at the top. Of course this will be cut off. This is not where it's going to be. Um, and so when I get it finished and I cut it off I'll show you how this works. But let me show you how I reverse that writing. I'm so excited about it and I did go over it twice as well so it, it would really stand out on that pretty gold fabric. Okay, so here's the name right here, and um, it's interesting because I wasn't sure what to do. So I've never done it before. So, you know, I highlighted that, and the first thing I did was I, um, let me highlight it again. Hello. Oh, I have to put cancel. There we go. That could never happen to you. 
There we go. Now right click. And the first thing I did was I thought I would flip it horizontally. So I flipped it horizontally and you can see what it did, what it did there. And that's the, exactly the way you want to do it. If you flip it, let me flip it back. Sorry. If you flip it vertically, which I tried that too, then it does this. That's not the way you want it. <laughs> so let me get into the other group and you can see where it is. Here's exactly um, what I had put on there. Put her name and the year at the end. So that's going to go and when it is um, stitched out, you just have to make sure that the bottom of it is next to the fold. The bottom of your words have to be on the fold because the entire uh, wall hanging sleeve comes down here like that. So when it's folded and turned the other way and sewn into that binding, you'll see that will all be stitched on. I've seen them done with embroidery before, but I've never seen them quilted in. And how easy is that for us to do that? I am so excited. The other thing that you want to do with this is, um, and I've already done it here, is you want to reverse your, your start's going to be over here and your end's going to be over here. But you see, if you right click, you can reverse start and end. And that's what I did. See, so if I go here, it's going to reverse it. And what I did was reversed it so that it would start, of course, stitching from the left side and going across this way. Because that way you get the best stitch. So I have cut the wall hanging sleeve. And remember that it was eight and a half inches this way. So I squared that up. And then um, I cut it exactly the width of the quilt. So now you take the two edges and you want to, um, you'll need to sew. I'm not going to sew it for her, but it's all cut and ready. So I've pressed that twice over so she can sew the edges. And um, then I ironed one side of it four and a half inches and this side was four inches. Now what you want to do is put the two edges, the two top edges together like that. And we are going to pin that to the top together. So all three edges are going to pin together. And I have that at the other end, so I'll show you um, exactly how we do that. Here I have the three edges are pinned together. So that's both sides of the wall hanging sleeve and the quilt top. And that's where it's going to be stitched. I would just go ahead and baste across there um, and then do your binding. And then you see the edge of the back is going to leave a little bit of fullness here in the front because you want that edge of the back to come straight down and full to the back and so there's a little extra fullness there and then you will hand stitch this to the back of your quilt and you'd want to pin that really good and just hand stitch it to the back of your quilt. That leaves just that little bit of extra fullness to allow for the rod, whatever kind of a rod you would put in there and then it doesn't make a bump on the other side when you hang it. It hangs nice and flat from the front of the quilt because you've got a little bit of extra fullness in there. So that's how you do it. Next week we'll complete this cute little quilt by doing freehand on all of the trees. And I'll explain a little bit more of my inspiration. So make sure that you join me. Thanks for watching. Bye.